Welcome to Midnight Menu Plus One. I'm Ray Canada. And I'm Margo Moss. Midnight Menu Plus One is a food lifestyle show on the podcast network. It's NewOrleans.com. Brought to us tonight by Petite Pet Care. While you're at work or on vacation, you don't have to board your pet. He can stay in the comfort of his own home. For loving care when you're not there, Petite Pet Care. Find them at PetitePetCare.com. Now, each week on Midnight Menu Plus One, Margo and I invite a member of New Orleans' restaurant and food community to join us. And we invite them to bring along their own guest, a plus one. We never know who the plus one is going to be. Sometimes it's a friend, a neighbor, family member, fellow restaurant colleague. Well, our special guest on Midnight Menu Plus One tonight is an authority on one of the staples of human existence, beer. Uh, Jeremy Labadee wrote the book on the history of New Orleans beer. He's a beer blogger, and he's known as the Beer Buddha. Uh, Buddha's promising that his plus one is going to be someone awesome. He's been bragging about this week. Can't wait to meet him or her. I'm wondering who that could be. Who's more awesome than, than Buddha? I don't know, Krishna, like some other uh, avatar? I don't know. But uh, all will be revealed in a matter of moments. And But before we get to Buddha, Margo, let's catch up on this week's culinary adventures. You eat anything worth reporting? I did not eat anything, but I uh, watched a movie about food. What was that? The uh, the hundred foot journey. <laughs> wow, what's that? Uh, well, you're gonna have to go see it. But I have to tell you, it was very good and and beautiful, nice story. And my seven year old sat through a two hour food movie. Yeah, so. but Julian's exceptional. That's like saying your 15 year old sat through a two hour <laughs> food movie, right? I mean, he's like. He's ridiculous. It's he's, a sweet story. He's it's like big. He's like he's a, he's Tom Hanks in it, or the <laughs> reverse, I guess. Yeah. Wow. So you so, liked it? Yes, it was. It's a brand new film. Yes. Cool. Helen Mirren. Mirren is that oh, her name? Oh, you know she lives in New Orleans part time. Really? And she said on record she wants to die in New Orleans. She said that like twenty years ago. That makes me like the movie even more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She loves this place. She says it's her favorite place. Excellent. Well, did you uh, eat uh, anything exciting? All right, I'm gonna week? I'm gonna confess something to you that you're gonna mock me about. Um, I had. You know, I've been on a barbecue kick lately. Uh, I was on that barbecue show, Best in Chow, on the cooking channel. I was a judge for that, right? And we, we judge these things. I've been eating a lot of barbecue lately. But I'm going to say this, and I'm just going to be honest about it. The, um, the best barbecue I think I've ever had in my whole life. Now, granted, I don't have a very refined palate in this subject. But, I mean, to me, it was the best barbecue I ever had, hands down. Put me in ecstasy. It was unbelievable, the stuff. <laughs> it was so great. It was by a place called Old McDonald's. And it's not in uh, Orleans Parish. <gasps> you yeah. left the parish? No, no, no. I ate in Orleans Parish. So I still can say I've never eaten there but uh, in that parish. But um, And I have nothing against this parish, by the way, but because it's in one of the ones I can't pronounce. But it's Hammond, Louisiana. It's Hammond. I've never been to Hammond. Okay. But they brought the barbecue here. I was at a wedding party, and it was so incredible. If you're ever in Hammond, you've got to go to Old McDonald's. I can't – I mean, I will. I can't believe how good this was. I already had dinner, and then I went to the wedding party. And when I, as I got out of the car, I said to Kathy, don't let me eat. And then as I saw that barbecue from across the room, I had already given up my willpower. I went over, and I had like, I don't know, eight or ten ribs right away. It was <laughs> unbelievable, just falling off the bones, super delicious, succulent, unbelievable. So, yeah, it changed my life forever. I'll never forget that. I'll never forget this barbecue. Excellent. Yeah. Okay, well, our, uh, I'm excited to meet our guest this evening but before we get to jeremy uh let's talk about eat fit nola yes eat fit nola is something we have as a friend of the show we've we've uh we've had her on our show before when you dine out at participating eat fit nola restaurants on wednesday august 20th for lunch or for dinner the proceeds are going to benefit eat fit nola programs including on-site health screening for restaurant staff um nutrition education and high school culinary programs teaching gardens, community cooking demonstrations. They do all this kind of wonderful stuff. And so you can find out more about participating restaurants by clicking on the link. We're going to put this up on our website, the Midnight Menu Plus One page uh, on itsneworleans.com. Or you can go directly to them at eatfitnola.com. So, uh, yeah, we really want to promote that. That sounds like a wonderful uh, project. Excellent. Time for a guest now, huh? Yes. All right. Well, we're very excited. I, I, I heard that um, that the reason why he got his name was because uh, he actually grew up uh, as a small child in the Himalayas in Tibet. <laughs> and when he was three years old, um, the elders of, uh, of the uh, local Tibetan religion came to him and wanted to proclaim him the next Buddha. And he turned it down because he knew his destiny was beer instead. And he ventured to New Orleans, and now he's here as the beer guru of New Orleans and, and maybe the world. And so he can tell us all about that. I'm really fascinated to hear more about how, uh, how you turned down um, 
the religious mantle of, uh, <laughs> of global Buddhism for uh, for beer. That's better than the real story. <laughs> <laughs> you got to tell it. us the beer, real story. Wait, though. that's not it? No, I wish it was. That would be awesome. Uh, well, no, the real welcome. story is just, uh, yeah, thank you. I appreciate it. I'm glad I'm, glad I'm here. The real story is I was at a party, and uh, and I was just talking talking about beer. You know, just the girl was there, that a friend of my wife, and she said, you know, you're fat, you're bald, you're like the Buddha of beer. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and I kind of was like, oh, that's awesome. I'll she didn't it. even say you have a beautiful smile. She was just no, like. No. She didn't say you looked at peace. <laughs> no, None of those things. No, no not at all. It no. was all just superficial. Yep. She Absolutely. said your belly reminded her of Buddha. Yes. Wow. And it worked. So. <laughs> Did she taste any of any beer that you've ever brewed? No, 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 no. She no? doesn't. My, she's like my wife. She didn't uh, drink a whole lot of beer. <laughs> uh, the, the she, I think the girl that did it is the cocktail girl. So, yeah. my wife doesn't drink at all. So, oh wow, perfect desi- perfect designated driver. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Well, can you um, tell us a little bit about uh, how you got interested in beer? And uh, you know, I I can yeah when when I uh, when I turned twenty one decided that I wanted to start drinking something different than all the stuff I was drinking before because now I was 21 and so I went to uh, it was the Savis Center at the time and I uh, was just perusing the aisles and I saw a rogue dead guy wait so before you're 21 you're drinking whatever you whatever you can find because you sure. can't go out and get it right absolutely so now you want to be more choose uh, you want to be more intentional yeah I wanted to pick something choose. different okay. something that I've never had before and it was a rogue dead guy 22 ounce bottle sitting on the shelf and I thought it was awesome. It just had that uh, skeleton sitting on a barrel. So it was Rogue Beer. It was the first. Was yeah. your first? I still uh, have that craft bottle. beer. You yeah. still have the bottle. You I still saved have the, the bottle. bottle. Yeah, I still Come have on. the bottle. Come on. Yep. It says 1996 right on the side. Okay. Not yeah. not one out of 7,000 people have the uh, maybe 8,000 have the uh, first bottle of uh, craft beer they ever yep, drank. Yeah, I have it. Yep. That's so sitting cool. on my shelf. Yeah. Did you uh, have the intent to save it, or you were just so moved by the flavor and? The I saved every single bottle that I've ever consumed up to a certain point and then it got to the point I had too many beers and so I threw them all out and saved just certain ones and that one was Wait, how many bottles some. did you get up to before you threw them out about 2,000 so did you have insect problems in the house or rodents no. or anything like that from it I mean what no what? I washed them out you washed them out okay. so your well, wife you doesn't drink but my she wife, appreciates uh, my wife supports this 100 percent yeah she doesn't mind at all um it, sometimes to answer your question sometimes I put them up on shelves and then sometimes there was nowhere for me to put them, so they just stayed in boxes. Wow. And then it just got to the point where it's like, what am I going to do with this? And so so how did you, like, emotionally, how did you, like, just jettison all those bottles after, you, after they became, you know, so uh, much? You no, wrapped up there was identity? no emotion. I just I just, just One day you just woke up and said, I don't want them anymore. Yeah. You threw yeah. them out. And then all yeah. of a sudden you had breathing room in your house. You had a lot of you breathing room. You doubled the amount of living space I, overnight. I did, yeah. <laughs> it was a lot of stuff. <laughs> a lot of bottles. In, and, and, and none of them, they weren't, they weren't the same. They're all different bottles. Did you ever think about selling the collection instead of just chucking it? I mean, it might be worth something, wouldn't it be? No? A couple it thousand doesn't, bu- It doesn't bottles? go that far back. I mean, I, literally <laughs> 96 is as far as it goes back. Uh-huh. Um, some of the old Abita bottles were pretty cool uh, because you can see the, you know, the, I got to have an Abita Amber from this year, and then it would be the bottle change, oh, you cool. know, which would see it. But nah, I just chucked them. Now, when you drink a beer, what do you – what? What do you appreciate about it? Is it like wine? I mean, I, honestly, I'm not a big drink, beer drinker, so I I'm, I would love to understand from your perspective. Yeah, yeah, what, absolutely, uh, it's definitely. Does like it wine. enhance food for you, or is it just alone you drink it and, and um, just the? I drink it alone. Uh, I don't pair my food with my beer. You can. I just that's just not what I do. Mm-hmm. Um, I I I can do it, and I have done it. I just prefer to let it stand alone. Um, for, and that's just my personal preference. So you mostly so. don't have beer at meals, huh? I never have beer at meals. You never have beer at meals. You're no. a big beer drinker, but you just don't. Yeah. Eat, yeah. No. So what is it? Is it do you are should a, a a beer? I mean, is it completely personal or what represents a beer? I mean, is that just completely individual or is it should it have a nice full round flavor like it depends or? on what you want so it's um, it's completely well, it's yeah. not you're asking like, are there any types of beer that you just hate like a whole class of beers that you they light don't, beer light beer well okay it's just because i don't it doesn't make sense yeah no i'm not knocking it's not a serious beer drinker in america well, i mean like, you I'm might as well drink water fan. 
I mean, like I don't. I'm not gonna sit here and knock Budweiser or any of those. You know that that right. that's fine. That's what you want. That at least has some sort of flavor. But a light beer just doesn't make sense to me. So, uh -huh. right. I mean, you're you're in it for the calories, which then you just might as well just drink water. <laughs> so that doesn't even make sense at that point. Because yeah, you really are kind of ruining. I mean, what are you doing? You're spending five bucks on a Bud Light. <laughs> I think we should establish his credentials before we continue. Just to just I have briefly. no so, credentials. Well, at you, all. well, you have some, right? You're you're head of beer at Martin's Wine Cellar. I am is, not. You're not? Weren't you? I used to be. Oh, you used to be. Oh, I thought you still were. Okay, Nine, well, you have been. I was in two thousand and. Nine. Okay, okay. And then I went it's to Nola Brewing. Long. Okay, well then you're okay. What did Nola you do Brewing, Nola that's Nola a big Brewing. deal. And also, you wrote the, the book on beer too. We got to talk about it in a little while. But I, you wrote the yeah. history of beer in New Orleans. Co-wrote the history of beer in New Orleans. Uh, yeah, I mean, I've been around. I've uh, worked for a distributor. I've worked for a retailer. I've worked for a brewery. I've so the three tier system. I have it covered. Um, I've worked. I've worked it all. Um, usually, I like retail. Uh, you have a little more power. Uh, as to what you want to bring in and you're not stuck on one brand or uh, whatever the distributor will carry I can just do whatever I want I enjoy that part of it more just because uh, you just get more options that way for me and do you enjoy like working helping people figure out what beer they like oh or sure no? yeah like that's fun because uh, usually you get those oh, I just don't like beer um, and then you get some, uh, like the husband will come in and is like, oh, she wants a girly beer. And it's like, oh, there's no <laughs> such thing as a girly beer. <laughs> you know, I mean, y y the typical girly beers, quote unquote, would be like a beet of strawberry. I love a beet of strawberry. Me too. I mean, after I mow a lawn, that's what I want to drink. <laughs> you know, and then, so for whenever somebody says girly beer, that's right. not. And you're a good husky guy with a beard and you're a beer expert. Yes. I'm glad. I'm going to quote you now whenever somebody judges me quote for it. my quote beet away. strawberry. I'll drink, I'll drink yingling. All right. What's Yingling? It's just a it's a American lager. It's something simple. It's the oldest brewery in the country. Huh. I, I, they don't sell it here, but mm. we bootleg it here. Mm. My plus one bootlegs it here. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Well, don't give it away. We're not no, ready no, for no, no, no. her yet. We see her. And I'm, I'm happy. I'm happy at the shock. <laughs> 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 so tell us um, what motivated you to write a book and. Uh, then I would like to get into that. Tell, tell everyone, tell us the name of your book and when it came out uh, and who you co-authored it with. And The name of the book is New Orleans Beer, A Hoppy History, mm -hmm. uh, Big Easy Brewing. Mm -hmm. um, and I had no intentions of writing a book. Uh, a distrib the the uh, publisher? publisher reached out to me. And so I said, oh, yeah, no problem. I can write a book. And then they said, okay, well, we need it by November. And this was last summer. I was like, oh, yeah, no problem. I can do that. I've never written a book before. And so my wife is uh, she like big into history, so she was like, okay, I'll do a lot of that research for you. So she went to the library, and she said, you're screwed, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> and there because there's no information. Wow. Um, and I was like, I've got to get this done by November. And it was like, it's going to take you longer than that. And I remembered that there was a guy that I'm friends with on Facebook that had been doing um, some research for a beer tour around town. I was like, well, let me reach out to him. Maybe he can help or maybe he can just join. And so I asked him, I said, hey, you know, what do you got? And he's like, I've been doing this for two years. And I said, all right, do you want to you want to team up, do some superpowers? <laughs> and he's like, absolutely. And so we combined forces and we were able to get it done. And it's Argyle. It was Argyle, yeah. Yeah, we love Argyle. He's yeah, a, yeah, He's yeah. one of the first people we had on our show about two years ago. Oh, nice. Ago. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, he, yeah. it was Argyle, and he was just he was so excited, and he had so much knowledge. He was like, this is perfect. This is the perfect pairing. And we worked really well together because he did his history thing. I did the other stuff. And it was just like, okay. Then we just we, – we saw each other once the entire time we wrote the Really? Book. That's, that was it. That's so funny. That we didn't need to. Town. Yeah, we didn't – I mean, it wasn't – it wasn't that we, what a world we, live we in. didn't reach out to each other. It was just we didn't really need to. This is another Facebook success story. Yeah. And yeah. I, I mean, I wrote. Uh, I met you through Facebook. That's why yeah, you're here. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You meet Argyle through Facebook. You write a book together. You don't even have to meet each other. Once. Crazy. Yeah. Never had met him before. Met him once since. And now I like him? Now I, yeah, I love him. He's awesome. <laughs> I get along with everybody. But <laughs> now, I mean, we've seen each other a lot. So it's, you know, it's, it's different. But, yeah, we have, we've, we've, had a, we've had a lot of fun doing this. So what's one of the most surprising things that comes into mind about the history of beer? 
that New Orleans had a brewery in like 1726. Huh. So right 1726. Over, yeah. So eight years after the city gets settled, yeah. they were already making breweries here. Sure. And it was, uh, our guy will probably correct me on this because he did the history part, but it was, it was uh, that Gentilly area right around there. And it was huge. It was a suburb back then. Yeah, and it part and it, what was interesting, he was able to get the first, the first time somebody in New Orleans, at least somebody that skipped out on a bar tab. <laughs> and we had like the first deadbeat, you know, for a bar. What was that? I don't know. That, it, Argyle, that's Argyle's thing right there. <laughs> but it wasn't. It was that same brewery that uh. sued him for the money. So <laughs> it was pretty suit? interesting. Wow. Yeah, it was awesome. He got a lot of. He had a great, a lot of great information. Now, there was a time where New Orleans was, what, like one of the two or three top uh, brewing cities in America? We were right? the brewing capital of the South. Wow. Yeah, we, when, when, what period would that be? Uh, probably late 1800s, um, right up to Prohibition. Prohibition, Prohibition really the, hurt. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Explain to us how Prohibition, um, how, how it altered the beer drinking scene and changed the quality of beer and all the rest of it. You know, uh, what, you get into that a lot you don't book. hear. No, we don't really because New Orleans didn't really suffer Prohibition that badly. Beer wise, we did. But New Orleans, is, it was just like, whatever, we we're going to do what we want. But the brewery suffered because they couldn't right. produce it. Uh, and, you know, people were producing alcohol, but the breweries really did suffer. Right, right. Because a lot of them were national breweries, not local. Uh-huh. Um, they had a lot of local too, but you know they they had to shut down. Right. Uh, they were producing malt products, things like that, um, and it, yeah, that, I mean that hurt that hurt nationwide. I mean we had like right now on the books we have we're close to three thousand breweries in the country. Um, there was a point he, it, it we cut down to like a dozen or two, right? Yeah, yeah, it was that low, and so yeah, we're shooting back up quick. Real quick. Yeah. I think we need to drink some beer. Oh, yeah. yeah. I love the way you poured that. You didn't angle the glass at all like the bartenders usually do. You just poured it straight down and oh, yeah. let the head Absolutely. go right up. Now, what are we drinking? This is uh, this is from my home state. I don't know who's drinking this. You're not drinking it. Megan's going to do <laughs> Sorry, I gave it away. Sorry. <laughs> oh, we know her name's Megan. All right. We're going to have to have Why don't we just bring her up now? Yeah, Sounds let's good. do that since I just gave it away. I'm sorry. No, that's all right. But uh, this is... Um, from my home state, Virginia, Licking Hole Creek, uh, Magic Beaver, Belgian style. Oh, wow. That's like, uh, what a great name. Absolutely. It's kind of spicy. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And honey or something. This is, you know, they're using um, American and New Zealand hops in a Belgian style beer. Okay. So they're, just, they're having fun with it. This is really one of the uh, – uh, Virginia right now, and I hate talking about Virginia, but that's my home state, but yeah. they're coming out with some really amazing beers right now, so it's nice to see. But the reason I brought this one was because New Orleans and Louisiana is going that way too. Um, we're not growing as fast as them yet, but right, we're right around the corner, and it's going to be fun. Why so. is uh, Virginia growing so fast? Their laws in, in, encourage growth, whereas our laws inhibit growth. Um, I mean, you, you know um, – Using 40 Arpent uh, as an example, they're in um, St. Bernard Parish. They're in Chalmette. He absolutely refused to open a brewery in Orleans Parish. Hmm. They opened up a hair salon in Orleans, and just the, the amount of crap that they went through, he said never again. And so he opened up in St. Bernard. So just hard to get permits. And oh, yeah. the NOLA Brewing, it took them 30-plus days just to get their water turned on. Mm. They had to get Stacy Head involved, from what I understand. Wow. So there, and and there are laws probably too that are archaic that still prohibition make it. era. Absolutely, sure. The fact that we have distributors is prohibition era. You have to have a middleman. You have to. You have no choice. Uh, in San Diego, you do have a choice. You don't have to. Up what to about a North amount. Carolina and Virginia? Do they have a choice? Do, do you have? They to have do. Um, they they have distributors as well. Oh, okay. Yeah, they. they know, most states have them. Um, some states don't some states you don't have to have a distributor you can grow on your own up to a certain point and then you can then you have to go to a distributor you know here nola brewing when they first started uh forced to go through a distributor you had no choice and if a distributor doesn't want to pick you up you don't have a business Hmm. um and they went through glazers 
Well, now your plus one has been waiting patiently yeah, by sorry. the mic. Hasn't been breathing heavy. So or, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Tell us who she is, why you brought her, and um, welcome. Um, Megan Capone. All right. And uh, I, I brought her because you know she's one of my f- she's one of my besties. She's one of my drink buddies, yeah. and uh, <laughs> I also wanted to just completely confuse you guys and just make sure you had no clue who I was going to bring. <laughs> <laughs> So, so you're, are you involved in the food industry? You just uh, or beer industry? You just like to drink. I <laughs> she definitely <laughs> likes to drink. I do. I do like to drink. Now, um, yeah. Now, thank God, because I just had a baby, so I'm very excited oh, to drink. Congratulations! Now. Thank you. It's fun to get back to drinking again. Sometimes every few hours. Uh, well, not every few hours, but <laughs> you know, I space <laughs> it out. Um, anyway, um, and my husband, he's a home brewer, and so that's uh. that's how he and I met, because um, my husband. Yeah, I'm trying to remember. Hey, are you a writer? Yeah, I write uh. for. The, well, I used to work for um for Gambit, but now I'm happily not doing anything but freelance because I'm just taking care of the baby. Um, but yeah, um, when I write, it's Megan Braden Perry. All so. right, now you're starting to talk about your husband. Yeah, home brewing. yeah, yeah. Um, he home brews, and I guess it's kind of um, I guess kind of like the same type of story that Jeremy had, where it's like you know, there's a friend who says you know something, and then it kind of clicks with him. Um, that's kind of what happened with Grant. Grant is my husband. And he always was into beer. Like, he would see these Mr. Beer kits, and he would say, oh, that, that looks kind of cool. And I, I was like, he was just trying to play it off, you know? And then I'm like, well, I think he kind of likes it. Let me just get it for him. So I got it for him one day, and he fell in love with it. He, and he just fell really hard into it. He researched, went to Brewstock, and now he makes everything himself. And he's doing New Orleans on tap. And so they just talk beer and do beer shares and go to Avenue Pub all the time. Now explain to us New Orleans on tap. Oh, yeah, well, New Orleans on tap. Um, proceeds, all the proceeds benefit the um, LASPCA. And so the home brewers, and maybe the other people too, maybe the main brewers donate their beer, I don't know. Yeah. But I know the home brewers, um, you know, they're allowed to donate their beer because you can donate your beer and it's fine. Um, but if it's something where someone were to actually buy it, then legally you can't do it. Okay. I guess, I don't know. But um, he did it last year and he really liked it. And people just come and they, um, it's free to get in, and then you just buy tickets. And if you want to try a beer, you can. And so it's a really nice way to get people to try a bunch of different types of beer, like sours. Um, this guy, Mitch, he makes a lot of sours. Um, and then the Crescent City Home Brewers, they make a million things. Grant makes stuff. Cajun Fire folks are there. Huh. It's fun. Well, we That's know you're really fun because you are you're you're alternating. You have in your left hand uh, <laughs> the beer that he just yeah. this great rich Belgian, <laughs> and in your right hand you have another cocktail that you just got in the bar next door, mm-hmm. and you're sipping one and sipping the other. <laughs> I like that. That's pretty cool. Hope we're getting a good shot of that. <laughs> what are you drinking? What's the cocktail? A Negroni. Nice. Um, I'm drinking it because my um my friend who's you know I guess kind of like the way that Jeremy is like a brother to me. My friend James Cullen, who's the chef at Treo. Um, he and I went out today just to hang out and go to Taqueria Corona. Favorite nice. Mexican oh, we love that. Yeah, right here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I love it. Yep. So um, we went out there, and he was the first person who ever got me a Negroni. And I was like, oh, let me go ahead and get a Negroni since it's on my mind. So. <laughs> Beer wasn't enough. You had to get the Negroni, mm-hmm. too. All right. It's cool. <laughs> yeah. Uh, now, did your husband participate in that uh, beer tasting, the big one that uh, YES does oh. at, uh, at Mardi Gras World? I was super pregnant at the time. Uh, I went into labor two days after. Because I was a volunteer at that. After. That was fun. Oh, it two was days after? Fun. Yeah. Oh, wow. It was really fun. But I went with him. Um, so I was his, des- his designated driver who was walking around like a penguin. <sighs> and people were like, oh, my God, you're really here? What are you doing here? But how, 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 what was, what relation to when you gave birth? Um, two days before. Two days before. Yeah. You're running around. So at nine and a half months pregnant, you're running around with like what? There was like 300 kinds of beer to drink, yeah, whatever. I'm and you can't like, drink any of it at that point. Yeah. And I'm just waddling like um the little penguin on. Isn't there a penguin on Batman? I feel like. And, and your husband's yeah, yeah. getting. He's got to be getting plastered. Yeah. Because he was er, I, everybody there was blitzed. Yeah. 100 percent of the people there were blitzed. How could you not be? I mean, you pay to get in, and then you have yeah. 300 beers to choose from. You got to try them all. And then after yeah. that, like all the beer geeks went to Avenue Pub. <laughs> so he there like just taking full advantage of the designated driver thing the avenue so. pub is sort of like the beer headquarters i it, would you say of like i mean there's several places that have a good choice in new orleans but avenue pub seems to be the preferred place for oh, yeah. folks that want the constant widest on, variety uh, best of the south for beer bars yeah right definitely and but it's because they are so they have such a variety and that I mean, the atmosphere is cool. and Well, it, Polly, Polly understands beer, and okay. she's taking it upon herself to learn the product. Um, whereas some of the other beer bars, I mean, it's just like, oh, just bring this in, it sells. 
and you know she actually cares about it and you know she cares about it and she understands it she knows what people want and so i mean that, that's important you know it's not just there to make money it's there to you know to appeal to to all the beer geeks and to and to just just promote the beer culture and she does a really good job at it wonderful now do you have a day job besides just drinking beer and writing books <laughs> i do unfortunately <laughs> yeah <laughs> what do you do uh, i work for job one okay um i put people back to work all I right find people jobs so any of our listeners that, that are looking for jobs right now they should get in contact with you sure yeah <laughs> <laughs> i'll do my best <laughs> and then you can celebrate with them <laughs> afterwards. that's right that's so right some have tried to offer me money and beer and it's like you know you, you can't, can't do that yeah, oh you can't get you no no uh -uh, tips not allowed <laughs> not allowed i'll get fired yeah that's what kind of job is that i don't know i don't know it's <laughs> mm, going to politics <laughs> <laughs> then i could take that yeah, yeah exactly. so you're right yeah <laughs> <laughs> well y'all this uh we've come to the part of our show where we um ask you a question that you would not uh have gotten at gambit or um at your day job um, so it's called off the menu so I'm gonna ask you Jeremy um, what is your most compulsive habit compulsive habit um. other than drinking beer <laughs> are you just an angel and have no, er, you not don't at all. bite your toenails no, or no, anything no, weird no. like that. Oh no, that. I got a feeling he's got yeah. several compulsive habits. If you keep beer bottle, I mean that's not. T I mean that's not. No, that's a little weird. It's it, it's compulsive in a good way. Uh, yeah, that's tough. I don't know how to answer that. <laughs> My wife might be able. To how would your <laughs> How would your wife answer that? I don't know. That's just a, this is actually really kind of a hard question. Okay. Uh, I don't know. I've never thought about it. Maybe that's maybe, maybe that's, you're not self-aware. Maybe, self that's, aware. maybe that's right. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Maybe my wife would know. Because Megan, you don't know. I'm trying to think. I can't. I can't think of anything. Compulsive habit. Or your like worst I, habit. It doesn't have to be. Or a habit that you are. Do you like habit. to burp? I, oh, I do. You do like to burp. I'm, and they're good. Too. Yeah, they it's are. Really and you're like, very comfortable with it. You're not. Well, it makes well, sense because yeah. beer makes you burp. Yeah. But minor. That's uh, like <laughs> I can hold it down, man. I mean, it's how like, many beers a day you have on average? Oh, see now here's the here's the twist to everything. I maybe have two or three beers a week at the moment. What? Most. Yeah. <laughs> how does that, that make sense? When I started no when I started writing about beer, I actually started. I st I'd stopped. I don't drink as much anymore. Yeah. Why? I Is it like a chef the, when you, you know when you cook yeah. and you're not hungry at the end of the meal and you feed everyone else and yeah. they're all like enjoying yeah. it but like, i don't know like lately i've lately i've been doing more, a beer a night uh, but that started last week just because it, it helps me de-stress from work right. but I've, I, other than that yeah I, i've gone two weeks without drinking anything i'm surrounded by beer but just didn't feel it huh. how long could you go before you think you start missing it like i could stop now and not drink it do, it's not yeah i don't need it it's you weird. just enjoy it's really it. Weird. Yeah, you just, would just enjoy the yeah. flavors, yeah, that's but it. you don't crave it. So not obviously, it's not, not like a no, no. I could, I could. Yeah, people are. I'm sure people are going to be shocked. I could stop mm. drinking now and never pick up again. It doesn't matter mm. Mm. because it, I mean, I like the taste of it. Yeah, but for me, it's like I don't. I just, it's not a must have. You know. Okay. So, but yeah, that's I, what every alcoholic says. <laughs> yes, I, <laughs> <laughs> I could quit. Anyhow. All right, tea on the other hand. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, okay. I'm All right, I gotta, we got to give a question to oh, Megan, okay. and I miscalculated. I I uh, thought of a question for you, but you know, I'm going to ask her. Oh yeah. yeah. Maybe well, he hesitates this. as if like, do you want this? Like, yeah, of course I want. It. No, yeah. it was like, when are you going to bring your coffee? <laughs> oh, okay, I'm okay. All right, Megan. I was here's what I was going to ask Jeremy. <laughs> uh, you're you're on you're going to be on an island for three weeks. And you can't have any food. There's nothing there. All you can have is unlimited supply of one brand of beer, and you're gonna have to live off of that beer. <sighs> what would that be for three weeks? What would you bring? I know exactly what I would You'd bring. You face lit up as soon. As I didn't even finish the sentence. Yes, what I would be? bring. Um, I think it's called a left hand milk stout. I think it's, is it left hand brewery? Yep. Left and hand it, milk stout. Yes, and it's like the label is black, and there's hand. I guess a left hand <laughs> on <laughs> it, and it is so good. It's one of my most. And where do you get it? I, th I think that might be one of my favorites. Oh, Not God. Beer. Yeah, I, I got it last time in Florida, 
And then um, there's another one, but I, I can't bring two. Duh. You only bring one. I can only, only bring one. Bring one. That's be the that hard one. part. Gosh. Now, would you get sick of it at the end of three weeks? You're never going to drink it again because you had to, you know, that was your three meals a day. <laughs> nah, I'm a stout girl. I love it. <laughs> Well, that's my good husband too, just made that's a clone. A little too. Yeah, and my husband just made a clone of it. So, because um, after Jeremy told him that um, for when when our baby oh, was born, yeah. he should make you know a, a stout. Well, he should make a beer, you know, to commemorate the whole birth thing. So he made it and called it Mother's Milk Stout, and it's a complete Aww. replica of the left hand milk stout. Wow, that's yeah. Sweet. Well, hold on, I told him he needed to use like. Milk. He, he, oh, yes. we're back on the breast milk yes. again. <laughs> <laughs> this has come up like six times in the last <laughs> few weeks. <laughs> That's what I told him, but then, then it was like, I can't, she can't produce enough for me to go ahead and brew it. And I was like, I No, you know what, though? It could be a gimmick. It could just be like 2% breast milk <laughs> or something. Just add a little bit. <laughs> but you know, yeah. the, the good thing is, is. And then it becomes a health drink. Oh, it is a health drink. <laughs> it's a health drink already. Oh, yeah. The yeah. stout, I told her the stout for her. It, it honestly it helps her lactate. I was gonna I yes, was gonna bring it up, but I didn't know if it was that. <laughs> my I mother-in-law heard claims that, that in Miami they used to bring the beer. I think they did around the country. They bring the beer beer truck around as soon as she woke up after delivering the baby because they'd knock you out back then. You know, yeah. completely. You go the anesthesia would put you out. You wouldn't remember pushing, right? Yeah. And then you'd wake up. And they'd have the beer truck there, and that's the first thing they'd shove down your throat. Like, no, I don't like beer. Nope, you have to drink. It's medical. You know, Whoa. and that's what they would do to you because they really believed that it helped you lactate. And it's true. It and it's true, right? Yeah. They say it's true. They say it's true. I, I mean, I'm not a doctor or anything, but was they say beer, it's true. Was um, beer a medicinal thing sure. ever, or was oh, it yeah. just like, Wasn't it kind of like no, I mean, like their tinctures and alcohols was, well, was medicinal. But you got to think. Yeah. I mean, drinking water was really bad back then, so... This was your this ah. and wine was really your right. only option, right? Uh, because and you know they thought it was the beer rather than the boiling process, which made the water healthy. Uh-huh. Um, so yeah, they didn't really understand that. <laughs> yeah. So is, is this Megan? Did I get you right? This is your first night out, uh, like About drinking myself. since the baby by yourself. Yeah. Wow. Oh, I, and how old is and what's your baby's name? Franklin. Franklin, Franklin. Michael Capone. Sweet. Nice. Yay. Is he, yeah. How old is Franklin? He's seven weeks. And he's at home with his milk. Chilling. <laughs> <laughs> I'm enjoying this. Well, you're well, working you're on making some more. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> now, I have a question. Jeremy poured another beer. Oh, yeah, but and I was going to say. <laughs> yeah, what do we have? This you could bring on an island. Because to me, it <laughs> smells like bacon. Yeah, taste mm. it. Taste it. All right. I mean... <laughs> oh, yeah. It tastes like chocolate. Yeah, there's going to be hints of chocolate. Mm. Nice. It's she's smoked. got quite a palate, huh? Mm. Yeah. Well, it sounds like she's a wine drinker, so she should. I don't drink wine at all. Oh, you don't? No, no. no. I don't she drink just, wine she just, drinks, she just drinks gin out of, like, a shoe, I think. Yeah, <laughs> maybe, maybe that's <laughs> what it is, too. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, this is definitely mm. a I know she drinks a lot. She keeps going, I don't here, drink so, beer, yeah. I don't drink wine. What's left? You know? So God. this is a malt. This what? is a porter. A porter. So, what is the difference? What does that mean? Uh, it's just the style of beer that it's brewed. That's it. I mean, it's you have ales, you have lagers, and then there's the subcategories of each. Now, does it not have as much um, foam <laughs> for any particular reason? That's just the way you pour it. I mean, does that have anything to do with beer? It'll have to do with carbonation, how you pour it. Yeah. Does that affect the flavor? No. I mean, do people care about the foam? Oh, uh, sure. Some the people are like, I've got to have, you know, this amount of head on it. They call it the head. Okay. So. But I don't I just poured it. <laughs> like I mean, yeah, that's, we, you know, a lot of people don't realize that. I just, just drink it. You know? <laughs> yeah, just drink in it. In the end, it. just drink it. I've, I, okay, I read your book. when uh, I bought it from uh, Argyle. The week it came out, he was doing a little book signing over at um, Midway mm-hmm. Pizza, yep. which we love on Ferret, mm-hmm. Steve Watson's place. And they were having a beer night, too, so that was really cool. They had some special brews there. But anyway, I read that, and I read another. That got me interested in beer history, so I started reading some other things. So I can't remember if I read it in your book or I read it somewhere else, but I think I read somewhere there was, like, no porter beer, like, in the whole country for uh, – is that true? There was Like, it almost died out at one point after Prohibition. It was, like, all you could get was Pilsner, basically, right? Oh, sure, yeah. Well, um, the – when uh, the, the German wave of immigration came over, yeah, it definitely dominated. And uh, this, the ale style did not, I wouldn't say it died out, but definitely almost. It, it was yeah, down sure. to like one brewery or something yeah. made it some crazy sure. number like yeah. that, right? Yeah, and then, you know, this was one of George Washington's favorites. It was a porter. He used huh. to brew that in uh, Mountain Vernon. Now we're so. back to Virginia again. Always. <laughs> <laughs> I think we will always go back. We'll always mm-hmm. go back to Virginia. 
At least I will. I don't know about now, how, now, all these microbreweries, I mean, we're all glad for them because it gives us variety and we get to keep trying stuff. And I feel good because I'm a big localist. I hate buying from anything, any big corporation or whatever. Sure. And so, I mean, we all love these microbreweries. But, I mean, some of them are great and some of them are not so great. Mm-hmm. And some of them have great names and nice bottles and then the beer kind of sucks. Like, yeah. you know, you, get, you, you have a sense of, like, in your opinion, like, like what – what percentage or what piece of the microbrewery uh, uh, market out there that is available to us in New Orleans would you consider like worthwhile and good? Maybe we ask both of you that question. Hmm. Local out of local beers? Yeah, I mean all these microbreweries that show up. I mean, what percentage do you think are you're glad they're there and you, you know, I mean, you I'm drink glad come they're back all and, there. Well, okay, I but mean it's it's a it's a it's a, I mean it's good thing. Competition's a good thing. Right, right. I mean, how many do you enjoy thing. of the microbreweries? Like what percentage do you think? I don't. It's tough because at this point, um, a lot of the beers that I'm getting aren't from. They don't. They're not in Louisiana at all. Right. Right. Um, well, because okay. I've because I've had a lot of them already. Um, but um, yeah. I mean, I, I, I like you. I try to support local. Right. And then do the local thing more than anything. Well, how about this? Let me ask both of you. Uh, maybe we'll start Megan, and then go to Jeremy. Um, wh- what local, um, what Louisiana beers do you enjoy the most? Say two or three that you enjoy the most. Hmm. Um, I almost said uh, the wrong thing. Um, Nola Brewing, their Smoky Mary. I love it. I loved it a lot more in the beginning. I think, I don't know if it's true that they like stopped making it as smoky. Is that true? That they like kind of toned down the smoke? Because I loved it when it first came out. Like I was obsessed really like obsessed i would go to midway and crave it yeah, I don't know. It's, <laughs> but it's, almost like it's not as smoky anymore i still love it though that's i don't know i can't answer that um yeah. it's the whole oh, beauty strawberry tastes different this year than it did last year yeah it, dude, who the hell remembers what it tastes like last that's year? <laughs> so it could be you it could be the brewery yeah. you don't know okay but but I, you, we gotta remember our palates change every seven years huh. so I mean, you're, you're you what you get used to it's gonna change. That was like my so. favorite. And then who makes Bucane? Is that um That's by Tesh. Okay, I love Bucane. As you can tell I like the smoky things like this. Yes. Um Bucane is so good. Um, I made a pulled pork with some Bucane. Ooh. Yeah. I bet it was rope. When did you do that? Uh, last year. Nice. Yeah. If you said yesterday we could just like all go <laughs> over. Yeah, I was gonna say <laughs> no, <not laughs> left over. Yeah, that sounds <laughs> awesome. Yes, do that. Cool. Okay, so there's your there's two years. Mm-hmm. So how about you, Jeremy? What are uh, what are two others that uh, are made in Louisiana that you love best? Um, I really like. Um, of course, I completely just like lost it for a second there. Help me out, Lafayette Ghost in a Machine. Oh, oh, oh. Parish. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, Parish Brewing. Okay. They do, that guy's amazing, man. That's some really good beer. Okay. Um, you know, and, and I, I know for a fact people are going to bust my balls over this one, but mm-hmm. Abita. I mean, it's which good one? beer. Um, What's your I, favorite Abita? Oh, I don't. I, that's I can't answer that question. Strawberry, probably. All right. And, and I know. Like, I'll, yeah. Thank you. No, you just all the beer nerds out there are going to be like, "You suck. You're not real." <laughs> Thank you. But uh, yeah, I mean, I th- I just had their Pilsner, which is really good. The Seersucker Pils. I actually really enjoy that. So is it kind of cliche to say Abita because that's just the one that's been around the longest and all that around here? It seems like it's available so widely. Is that why it's not cool? Why, why the beer nerds? Or is it like beer art nerds, snobs? Like the There's beer snobs nerds and everything. Hate that's Abita. what I think. They hate Abita. They hate it. I have right. to smack why? Grant upside the head sometimes because I'm like, dude, I, we used to love Abita. I, mean, the, for, for, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I can't. I can't Are there classes of beer nerds, by the way, too? Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, for example, within, like, uh, New Orleans culture, you have lots and lots of subcultures, and then you have the hipsters, which to me are, like, <laughs> a, they're, they're, an, they're a foreign invasion mm-hmm. of, uh, of another kind of culture, that, and, and it also judges the other subcultures. At least that's a cliche of it, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And it's sort of like all the subcultures can live together, enjoy each other, and blend together and learn from each other, but not the hipsters. They're always like, nope, this is the one way to do it, and it's going to change in two weeks, and I'm going to be the first one to know, and I'm going to start judging people that act like I did two weeks ago. You know what I mean? Yeah. Do you have that in beer? stuff too you're waving your arm in agreement yes. oh, yeah. do you have that with beer nerds too is there sort of a, a sort of beer nerd that's very judgmental and oh, has yeah. like a, a arbitrary set of rules that they yeah th- I mean the beer snob definitely exists and it's mm. bad and it may not be better beer it's just sort of like their rules about what better beer should be right yeah I mean it, it's always gonna it's always come down to individual taste right um, but yeah I mean there's yeah people definitely so, Definitely. So what's the rudest but funniest thing you've gotten on your uh, Facebook page or Ooh. blog? or The rude? Nobody's ever been rude. Nobody's um, ever, like, gone crazy at you for liking a beat of strawberry or whatever? Or? No, no. I mean, they'll, they'll, 
they'll joke with me, but it's never like, like we get crazy mean hate mail sometimes. You ever we've, get any hate mail? We've gotten what our first. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm but, kind of excited about. You yeah, mentioned the hate mail. That was kind <laughs> you of wanted? Fun. Yeah, go uh, ahead, go ahead. Yeah, I please think do. it's hysterical I because, be like uh, you. huh? I need to be like you. Well, this will like, provoke. Yeah. No, well, it's not we'll do this real. In a sense I mean, that this will provoke like a memory in Jeremy. They'll go like, "Oh, this happened to me too." So go ahead, share <laughs> yeah. that one. I don't. Well, don't, um, you don't on our Facebook page, uh, a woman from England found us, and um, said uh, Ray had posted a picture with a rolling LVI and some um, roller girls from the running of the bulls. And um, the rolling LVI was in the running of the bulls, yeah. And uh, this woman told us that we were scumbags and needed, and we should rot in hell. (laughs) For animal cruelty (laughs) issues. Well, we (laughs) didn't know exactly. She said, you should be lined up with the bulls. And um, (laughs) so, uh, we we went to her Facebook page and there were pictures of animals and cats, you know, like cat, a lot of cat yeah. pictures. And um, <laughs> so I think it was, yeah, she was an animal activist. Yeah, and she then, didn't realize that, that the New Orleans running the bulls does not involve any actual bulls. They're all she's roller girls. Yeah. I was yeah. so she's excited. I thought it was hysterical. Yeah, but before, before like, uh, before um, Margot could uh, flame back out or just, you know, wipe her out, uh, our, oh. our, our kind... Um, <laughs> One of our kind producers had already erased the post, so we See, uh, I am, lost track. Yeah. I'm so nice, too. I, I wrote, like, this. I thought it was witty, and, um, uh, you know, I explained to her what running yeah, yeah. of the bulls were and um, that no animals were harmed. And, um, and as the Elvis in the picture would say, for we appreciate her comments and what the Elvis Elvi would say is uh, ole, ole very much. <laughs> I thought it was funny. It was well, funny. I mean, that was I, a brilliant response. Yeah, Aww. I can't be hostile. Now, Megan, you must get it then. If Jeremy does it, you get yeah. for your writing. You I also to. worked at NOLA.com. Oh. So. <laughs> oh. Okay, come on. Doing I crime reporting. Read, I never read the <laughs> comments Crime reporting? Underneath. Yeah. Okay. I never read the comments underneath because they're <laughs> so crazy. The trolls that go nuts on every story that's in there. Just like it's the me- it brings out the meanest, weirdest people. Yeah. So what's like, can you, can you think of a few like really crazy ones? The worst things were not at NOLA.com. Actually, because like at NOLA.com, you can flag comments and, you know, some people would flag them. Like they had people who would um, ask me, you know, you must have never known anyone who was raped because <laughs> oh. you didn't put the description. How do we know if it's a black guy or a white guy? I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> That's not me. Um, but on my Gambit stuff, I got a lot of mean comments because I said, that um you know people make me feel bad kind of like the hi- whole hipster thing i'm a native but people make me feel bad because i use gps in the quarter sometimes but i just get confused i get kind of you turned mentioned around. you used the gps in the quarter yeah oh god forbid yeah. i know it was and, bad too i remember reading it <laughs> and it was like sto- like stories after like you know it wasn't just on that story it was like the guy came back on another story i wrote about growing up in my neighborhood in the seventh ward and he's like blah 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 this is all fluff and you know you said you used gps in the quarter you're you're not real you must be a hipster you must be this <laughs> oh, God. and then um gambit's policy is different than nola.com's policy where gambit will never take comments down Uh-oh, but now Nola- you just told all the trolls yeah yeah oh that's true ah. yep Shouldn't have told him that. <laughs> you know, you get <laughs> eye contact. They're gonna do it anyway. So. Do it anyway yeah. <laughs> and so they, he would make up like a bunch of other fake names. Like it, he would be under, you know, Jeremy Labadee. How do you know that from the IP address or? Yeah. Oh, that's Go, so funny. Uh, so you you don't hire address. a nerd. <laughs> Somebody did yeah. use my name, didn't they? Yeah, yeah. Some guy said um his name was something Labadee. Yeah. yeah it, and I remember and I thinking, like, I was like, why is Jeremy being me? They're impersonating your friends now. Yeah. Oh, yeah oh, that's funny. Yeah, I forgot about that. Because it's yeah. not it's not a common name. Yeah, Would you take it personally? Like and does it bother you at all? Yeah, I'm real sensitive, and my little feelings get really hurt. Um. My little, my feelings do get now the trolls are really gonna come, but um, my feelings do get a little hurt because it's like why be so mean? Yeah, it, that's and it's crazy. an opinion piece. Like um, Jules Bentley, he just wrote um something about um trying to become clean in New Orleans about you know alcoholism and blah blah blah, and people were really mean to him. And I'm just like that's just his experience. That's his story. He's not saying that this is 100. percent And it was fun. It was I funny it was and article. interesting. And uh, I mean. People. It's not representative of what's out there. It's like the one yeah. percent or the half a percent that that they're that the put loudest, these most obnoxious. Mm. Well, they they stand when it's out. anonymous like that, they would yeah. never say this in public. I mean, the racist, weird stuff that's said too, and the really just nasty, snide stuff is just crazy. 
And to me, using GPS in the quarter, I grew up, my family has been in the quarter for four generations. Yeah, they have business, a business in the quarter. And yeah. I would get... Two businesses. Real locals, we don't know where anything is, too. It's like it's past the grocery store yeah. or, you know, towards the river. You don't know north, south, east, west. Yeah. Or, <laughs> you know. Don't get me an address. Yeah. Tell so, I me mean, it's on Toulouse near this street, near this thing. Well, especially yeah. in the quarter, Ooh. you want to get lost, too. You know, you want to be able to find it because it's really hard to find a spot and all that stuff. Mm. And it's like, what's, there's, 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 no, uh, there's no shame in that. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, validation. <laughs> So how did y'all mm-hmm. meet? If uh, yeah, how'd you become friends? you're from Virginia and you're a, a local girl, I came when here uh, 20 years ago. I went to Tulane, uh, but I she reached out to me and said, "Hey, we love your blog." Blah, blah, and <laughs> it was really lame and nerdy. <laughs> was it, it, it was it dirty? It, no, nerdy. Oh, wait, nerdy. Oh, wait, <laughs> dirty. Wait, I was <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, hold hold on a second. So wait. So you and I met through Facebook. You and Argyle met from Facebook. Your co-author of your book. Yeah. And then you're plus one now. You guys met from the internet. Too. I don't because yeah. I'm creepy. I see a pattern here. Yeah. <laughs> you're creepy. I'm just creepy. I remember. I um, didn't take it as creepy. Do you like, make any friends like face to face, or all of them start out electronic? <laughs> it was technically face to face. Oh, okay. was it? Yeah, because um, like I think we had been reading your blog. Like Grant and I had been reading your blog, and I don't remember if we were friends. No, we weren't friends on Facebook. But I just remember thinking that you were cool. And so then um, the Nola Brewing God Easter keg learn hunt. The real truth. I, God, I know. <laughs> I'm waiting. The uh, Nola Brewing Easter keg hunt. I was at my husband. Oh, and Easter, and I'm Easter like, keg hunt. Yeah, nice. it was really fun. And I was cool. like, oh my God. I was like, that's Jeremy. That that's him. You know, go talk to him. Just go be. <laughs> He looks, that guy looks like Buddha. It you must be Jeremy. You want to talk to him. Yeah. So you're making your husband go up. Yeah, because I knew Grant would like. I knew Grant would think he was cool. And I was like, Grant, just go talk to him. And, and Grant's this is like, when Grant's like, he's <laughs> first getting into homebrewing. Yeah. He's already, oh, cool. Yeah, okay. he's first getting into it. And he's like, mm, I don't know. And then I'm like, whatever. <laughs> to heck with you. Does he really speak that way? Yeah. No. <laughs> just sounds, sounds just like me. <laughs> 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 and I was like, hey, I'm, sure I'm Megan. And this is Grant. And so then we became friends. Yeah, yeah. That sounds about right. Yeah. All right. So how did you meet your wife? Oh, oh yeah. Good story, actually. Um, so. Um, On the internet. Strippers.com. No, I was uh, living with my parents. Uh, they lived on the um, naval base uh, on the West Bank. And I ended up getting a job over at Blockbuster while I was in school. And um, she worked at the movie theater right behind the Blockbuster. It is right there in Algiers. Uh-huh. And, uh, you know, I was... The one that's like the glass-blowing place now? No. No, it's all torn down. Everything's torn oh, down over okay, there. It's okay. uh, the one on holiday right there. Oh, yeah, I don't know it. But uh, it was... Um, I was cocky rugby player. I was not fat, you know. And so she walked in to the to get a, grab a Coke or something and walked out. I was like, damn. And so it just it took me a, a while to get the timing right, but I went and asked her out. And Cold? She said, yeah. You just went it. You were like, no. If you ask my brother, uh, it's I stalked her for about a week and a half. <laughs> well, it's, uh, it, it's a matter of driving by to see if she's at work. I'm not just going to go randomly up there. Is she working today? Um, Is she that girl who drinks Coca Cola? Yeah, right. I don't know I mean, her name. How random. Right. So, but yeah, I, yeah, I walked that up and, and rifling through her garbage and following her home. I, I didn't yeah. know where she lived, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I walked up. She was she was selling tickets at the ticket booth, and that's when I, wa- I walked up. Do you remember? Did you save the stub? No, <laughs> no, I didn't. I do have the stub from our first date, though. Yeah, really, I do. Yeah, I, I have. I have. I see so you're big, hiding you're the hoarding. Sentimental. Big, yeah. Big, yeah. Big He's spender, sentimental. Big sentimental. Big spender here. I still have the receipt from Applebee's. Uh, Applebee's. <laughs> oh no! You, you ruined the story. Military kid. <laughs> you know, I grew up in suburbs. It wasn't. You know, I didn't eat local back then. But yeah, I mean, it was. I still have the receipt from that. I don't know why. I had What'd it, you get? Did it. you get blooming onion? No, I got. The, I got the <laughs> Applebee burger. <laughs> <laughs> she got a salad. Oh. I know. I know. Yeah. Trying to be cute. But yeah, it was yeah it was, it was it was it was neat. It worked just worked out. We were a perfect match, and we've been married for seventeen years. Wow! All right. Yeah, yeah. we got married <laughs> young. I was twenty three. All right. Yeah. Do y'all have a baby beer Buddha too? We do. Uh, she's eight, and she likes to homebrew with me. She's the she she's her official title is you know hop thrower. She likes to throw the hops in. Aww. And does she does she uh, does she taste it too? No, she um, she used to. 
Um, but now she won't touch it. She's like, she used to like world. beer and she's lost the taste of beer. She <laughs> used to like hoppy beers when she was about two. Uh, and then after that, it's like, yeah, that's disgusting. So thanks. <laughs> now, mm-hmm. this is a, maybe a silly question. My grandmother, used they used to make gin in the a bathtub. And I think it was probably pretty dangerous. Like, like Yeah, probably. Um, Wait, is beer. Uh, you made gin in a bathtub? My grandmother Your told grandmother, me. They, they, of course. But... Um, <laughs> Is beer, uh, is there anything dangerous about brewing at home? You could screw it up so bad and uh, it, it's it just It won't make you bad. sick or? I mm-mm. don't think so. And nothing's going to blow up. It's not like combustion no. and. It's not scary. It, it might boil over and get, you know, malt stuff all over your stove if you're doing it on your stove. But no, you're all right. Well, that's. It's not dangerous. Accessible. Oh, yeah, yeah it, absolutely. Uh, sure. And. Easy. um so we all uh, mention again too, like when Grant first started out, and uh, for home for people interested in home brewing, uh, where the go to place is, or one of the uh, the only okay <laughs> yeah, Bruce Talk yeah yeah that's it Bruce Talk Kyle yeah. and Oliver and there's another guy there now I don't remember his name but yeah for me it was Aaron I don't yeah remember. yeah Aaron guys, yeah he's gone yeah. now where is that mm-hmm. Aaron's Dryads? left town yeah Aaron right he. Is, is he out of town now? He's, yeah, he lives he's in Wisconsin, a, yeah. works for a malting company now. Yeah. Yeah. But um, they, uh, did he start? He started it? Yeah, Aaron? he did. Or no. Yeah, he, uh, did. he started. Yeah, he yeah. did start Brewstock. Because I went in there randomly. I think I was looking for a restroom. And I was off. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. Oh, look. They I can go nice here. I was, I was I ha- had it. a little issue, and I was, um, and they were, Aaron was so nice. Yeah, he's a nice guy. And I really got it. I mean, I was. I mean, I don't drink what beer. What are the odds so of that? Of all the bathrooms in the city, I know I shouldn't have. Into. Why did I have all to say that? Oh, that's great. Really loud. Yeah. But anyway, he was so awesome, friendly, interesting. Yeah. I, I loved. It. I felt like I had walked into like a some. I, I, I don't know, like some treasure trove because everything was foreign, and they were very uh, generous with their. I asked the stupidest questions like I do sometimes on this show, oh. and he was very gracious. So that's cool. They're uh, still And I'm happening. sure no questions. Margo, question, I think yeah. we are out of time, yeah. unfortunately. I can't believe that race bias. Oh, no. Oh, no. Um, well, our special guest tonight on Midnight Menu, we have been so excited to have you. Uh, the special guest with Jeremy tonight was Megan Capone. And... Um, well, we can find things about them on our website. We'll be, uh, we'll have all the links. Uh, anything else you guys want to plug? Anything? Um, why don't you tell us the way, if, way to find your? Um, I don't think we ever said how to find your blog, Jeremy. Uh, just www.thebeerbuddha.com. All right, Megan. Anything to plug? Yeah, um, Grant. Um, his brewery website is um, www.facebook.com/laughingtroll. Laughing Troll. I love yeah. that. Oh, that's cool. I'm going there right after this. That Yay. sounds great. Well, we'll have links to that on our website. It's neworleans.com. You can direct folks to, to uh, find, find, uh, find it there. Um, and we want to thank tonight our um, Petite Pet Care for loving care when you're not there. PetitePetCare.com. And especially appropriate tonight, of all nights, is to thank Monkey Hill Bar on Magazine Street. Mm-hmm. At Monkey Hill, you can enjoy, ready for this, a five-hour happy hour. Is it, I mean, should it, shouldn't it be renamed at that point? A five-hour happy hour <laughs> every weekday from 3 to 8 p.m. And so you can start early. And every Tuesday is also Taco Tuesday. You can get Coronas and Margaritas and uh, Sangria Specials plus $2 tacos. $2 tacos. <laughs> Well, that's it for tonight's show. Thank you, Jeremy Labity yeah, and um, Megan Capone for joining us. And uh, we'll see you next time on Midnight Menu Plus One. Till then, I'm Margo Moss. And I'm Ray Kanata. Good night. Midnight Menu Plus One is produced by Margo Moss, Grant Morris, and me, Ray Kanata. Our technical director is Chris Keogh. You can find photos from tonight's show on our website, itsneworleans.com. On itsneworleans.com, you can also check out our blog. You can listen to lots more episodes of Midnight Menu Plus One and our other shows, including Out to Lunch, Happy Hour, True to the Game, and Mindset. You can hook up with me and Margo anytime by following Midnight Menu Plus One on Twitter, 
Facebook and Instagram. And you can also Google Midnight Menu Plus One and we come right up. The fabulous audio quality of this show is brought to us by PreSonus Audio. For more information about PreSonus recording equipment, go to PreSonus.com. Midnight Menu Plus One is a production of INO Broadcasting for itsneworleans.com. For all of us here at Midnight Menu Plus One, thanks for joining us. I'm Ray Canada. And I'm Margot Moss. We look forward to seeing you back here next week on Midnight Menu Plus One. You know Labor Day signals the unofficial end of summer, but not the end of your outdoor projects. Lowe's helps you do it right and helps you save with Labor Day deals throughout the store. Shop now and get two bags of Stay Green Potty Mix for $12. And keep your lawn looking neat and trim with a Craftsman 2-Cycle 17-inch gas string trimmer now $20 off at just $119. Whatever's still on your to-do list this Labor Day, do it right for less. Start with Lowe's. Offers valid through 828. Soil offer excludes Alaska and Hawaii, U.S. only.